So question number two that came in, we don't, uh, we don't yet have the Microsoft 0365 connector up and running, but we're getting browser activity via our existing clients. I'd like to learn more about how the non-connector recognition is working because the tables with the rules are hidden. For example, if I know I have someone using the product and the application name in the DIS database, and there's no usage, uh, but there's no usage reported, that can mean one, like the traditional tables, there may not be any rules associated with the application name, or two, there are rules, but it disconnects somewhere. How do I troubleshoot this if we cannot see the rules? Are there pre-existing documents? Okay, great question, and I'm looking forward to hearing the answer. Um, so yeah, first thing is we do have some uh, pre-existing documents and um, let me just quickly share this uh, PDF. It's a technical description uh, specific to cloud metering. Um, one of the sections that you'll see here is the snow inventory agent. So to troubleshoot, I think this is the first part where you want to start. Um, and make sure that if you've activated the plugin in the back end in the snow management and configuration center, that these two rule files, uh, the web metering dot rules, as well as the web metering uh, dot C rules, make sure that these files were downloaded to the uh, target, the target's computer. Um, once you verify that these are downloaded, uh, one of the key features here is uh, the ability for us to store um, activity in memory first. So we store it until we get 50 unique hits or unique matches to the site that's being accessed uh, before we create the, uh, the uh, JSON file as part of our pattern hits. So once that file is created um, after 50 hits and 50 unique matches of uh, that specific site, then that information will then be collected with uh, the Snow Inventory Agent scan. And the next section after that, once you verify that the uh, agent is collecting that information and they have access to the site, and we've also got the, uh, the different rules files in place, then within Snow Access Manager, and I'll just go to my Snow Access Manager site, what you'll be able to see if you go to search for applications, uh, you can set a filter for um, cloud software simply by doing parentheses, open parentheses, cloud and close parentheses. And this will list all the cloud software that has been discovered in the environment. So you can then search for that specific application that you're looking for, and that will then give you access to um, usage information for that application. So that's the first, that's your start uh, to troubleshooting. Um, if I go to users page here, I can see uh, last used. And if I were to choose a specific user um, and go to the Workday application, you get more information about usage. As you can see, some of these orange uh, uh, flags actually tell you that these are cloud applications and you get in-depth usage information. It's the last use down to the second, um, how often they run the application, Let's click too soon here, how often uh, the user runs the application as well as the total time of usage. So that would be your first step to troubleshooting. Um, I believe you also mentioned uh, potentially uh, getting the, uh, the cloud connector. So I wanna make that distinction that first, the SAS discovery is done with the agent uh, by activating the, uh, the plugin in the Snow Management and Configuration Center. And if you want to optimize the cloud environment, then this is when you need the SAS connectors. And the SAS connectors give you additional information just detailed reporting at the user level. We also give you information about um, the login activity as well as optimization based on uh, usage and cost. Now, since we're talking about Office 365 specifically, let me access this view. And what you can expect is all the different subscriptions that you, that you have under Office 365. And drilling down, you can see the assigned users at a subscription level, as well as the usage information. So I can see active in the last seven days, um, active in the last 30 days, and even 
um, active more than 365 days ago. So these are um, optimization candidates. Scrolling up, I can go to my assigned subscriptions. And this gives you a quick view of what you have available versus what you, uh, the number of subscri subscriptions that you've assigned already. And from a cost perspective, this is the real optimization piece, is being able to see uh, the cost savings based on users without login activity. So I can see here active more than 365 days ago. So potential optimization uh, cost of $2,486. Okay. So just wanted to call that out. Um, what you get with the agent is the SaaS discovery and then the snow for SaaS uh, that gives you advanced reporting as well as optimization uh, capabilities based on usage and spend uh, comes with the snow for SaaS connectors. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, please let me know if you have any other ones. Naz, I would just ask one question uh, and I'm going to put you on the spot because we didn't uh, prep or prepare for this. But, uh, you know, in your, in your original example, you were showing Doppler uh, as one of the areas uh, that came up. So if you had Doppler um, open, let's say you know, because we don't have that connector, uh, let's say you know that you have 100 users. Is there a way to import the list of users into Snow specific to a cloud app so you can monitor who's using versus who's not using? That's a very good question. Uh, the other capability that we do give you access to is um, our generic SaaS connector. Um, so if we don't have the standard connector that plugs into, let's say, Office 365, for example, um, what the generic SaaS connector gives you the ability to do is uh, pull information from any other SaaS vendor uh, by connecting to the API and get information about the users. We can also pull information about the login activity um, and any other attributes that uh, may be helpful uh, to make that assessment. So what you have access to is a generic SaaS connector to pull information about that SaaS connector, uh, user accounts, as well as user login activity um, to start assessing how people are using Droplet. Awesome. Great feedback. Yeah. Um, this is Vic Patrika here. I just stepping in. I saw we had an additional question that came up regarding the application that has parentheses cloud in the name. Uh, and does that mean there's recognition for that? So yeah, NAS, you pull that out. That's great. And you can do you want to pull up everything that's uh, in the database, do a uh, search with uh, what's not installed as well, or we can just go with this. But um, what you see there in the parentheses cloud is, is the data intelligence service uh, adding an extra bit of information that allows you quickly to assess, right? So when you go into your environment, if you're deploying snow and you're bringing all this data in, you're going to have application names that you know span the, the, the universe, right? It's nice to have a little bit of a, you know, a, a breadcrumb there to help you uh, associate or know which applications are which, right? So this is just one way for you to quickly search and assess that these are recognized cloud applications, right? These are pure SaaS applications that are being run uh, in, 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 in the cloud. If you notice under the installation column there uh, in the grid, you'll see that there's a zero there. That's because our client has not detected in a physical install. Uh, it is only the usage that we're collecting and the, the obviously the in-depth usage, right, from the, from the device or computer and the name, uh, the user that's associated with it. So, yes, to answer the question, everything is within the database with the Parentheses Cloud is a recognized app. And then just to go back to what um, uh, Naz had mentioned earlier about the 50 pattern matches, that's how we continue to grow our application database, right, as Snow being crowdsourced across the world, uh, 4,500 plus customers. We collect new data. So, you know, when, when we introduced this functionality, uh, we had about a thousand recognized SaaS applications and now we're pushing through thousands and thousands. So, and that's all about us getting those unique patterns, matching them up and then doing the rule uh, generation after we do our research. So hopefully that helps. Oh, I see perfect on there. That, that means I did my job. <laughs> So yes, anything that you will see um, with the cloud 
definitely in parentheses, within your environment uh, means that, yes, it has been uh, recognized and normalized uh, within our data intelligence service. Perfect. 